What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to this episode of Split Screen D&D, the place where we're attacking all things Dungeons & Dragons from both sides of the screen. As always, my name's Tom Quinn, resident Dungeon Master here at Modern Myth. And I'm Josh Winans, resident player character here at Modern Myth. Mm, take us in, brother. Take well, us in. you know, I was thinking about today's topic, and uh, I wanted to do something that I think could really benefit tables that is kind of more of a broad thing. And I think a great subject to tackle would be what are just some, like, good traits that make up really good players because we're the most important. But, uh, you know, sometimes we got to talk about DMs. So we'll... Occasionally, they do have to be present. Eh, really, they're not important. Can I, can I see your good and up it to great? What makes a Ooh. great You just up the ante, player? my friend. You know, uh, well, that's, I, that's I how be, us DMs I'd roll. be a coward if I didn't see <laughs> your uh, race. So, yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. What makes the, the bestest of the best, greatest of the great? Oh, man, here we go. No but pressure. before we dive into that, uh, if you guys have been enjoying the content here at Modern Myth, uh, we hugely appreciate those likes, those comments, those subscribes. Smash that little bell until you hear that sweet, sweet chime. Does it actually make a chime? I, I have no idea. I, I don't think it, I don't 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 quote me on the chime. It it, it may not chime. Well, we just let down like everyone. On I the know. There's, there's a bunch. Well, there's a bunch of people who are like, no, it doesn't chime. I knew it didn't chime before you even said that. Uh, if you guys want to help us make more content like this, uh, jump over to Patreon.com/slash/modmyth. Uh, you can support us directly through there. Um, without further ado, though, let's get into some sweet DM slash player yes. traits. I what love makes it. Uh, a great, uh, what makes a great, respectively? Uh, where, where do we start? You want to well, start? You, uh, should I start? Before where? I think we even get into it, I think we should just like throw out the like obvious ones that you just need to have at a table. Period. In order for it to be okay, cohesive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. boilerplate. Yeah, uh, like um, and this, these are things we talk about a lot on this table. So I don't, uh, not table at this uh, on this podcast. Well, what are we? A show? I don't even know what we are. You, you got it. You're, yeah, you're, thanks, you're, you're getting there. So. We talk about them a lot, so I don't want to hammer them too hard. But I think, obviously, respect at the table. That yes. everyone is, you know, we don't have to agree on every single little thing. We're not, like, the best of best friends all the time. But, you know, just that we have that basic respect. Yes. I think uh, that goes hand-in-hand hand with uh, communication. I think both of those fall into the category of uh, because you are exercising respect at your table, because you're communicating effectively at your table, does not make you a great player, does not make you a great DM. Nope. That's the minimum requirement to sit in the seat, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, what, that's what we feel all leave. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think I, I really do think that. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, obviously, you are likely going to exercise those things, right? In your aspirations right. towards greatness, um, right. but really, those I think are that's that's the ticket to entry. Yeah, that's what um, I feel as well. Like if you don't yeah. have those, and you can't, it, it's very difficult to move up the chain. Yep. So uh, now that we got the basics out of the way, uh, let's just let's just let the DM go first because you know the DM's going to want to go first. So. I mean. We could roll for initiative, but you don't get to see what I roll, and I would just make it up anyways. So plus, you roll like a boss <laughs> lately. I hate playing against. I, you. I was rolling Yo, gnarly in the last couple of sessions. Man. Anyway, um, and and we want to start with the like we're gonna kind of ping pong this back and forth. Yep. Player DM kind of yep, vibe. Yep, yep. Okay. Um, what I'm really excited about this topic is to be able to hear what a player thinks makes a great DM and vice versa. Yeah, I think there's I'm some really interesting too. stuff there. Yeah, but yeah. Um, so starting with what makes a great DM, yep. and I think. I, I want to just go to the the pinnacle trait. As far as I'm concerned, um, when you've covered the boilerplate and you're right. just doing those basic things at your table, um, I think you, however you want to to call it, uh, agility, flexibility, uh, being adaptable. I think this this is the way I will I will correlate. And what I love about this topic is how much across the screen, these traits, I think, are going to hold hands. Yeah, uh, was, yeah we talked about that. Um, the, the reason I say that is because I think for a DM, adaptability is the lifeblood of player agency. Yes. If, if the, the less flexible you are as a DM, mm -hmm. the less opportunity the players will have for true agency at the table. Yep. Um, and I think... The goal for the DM, obviously, is to provide the framework, the scenario for these adventures to unfold in. Um, but the difference between a DM and a great DM right. is that those frameworks, I think, that you're providing have the flexibility, have the agility that 
your players get to exercise their agency in those spaces and can go anywhere they want with that story. Yes. You know, whether it's what you planned for, uh, what you had hadn't even considered or somewhere in between. Yeah. Um, I absolutely think that if, if, if you are, if you're feeling like you want to sharpen your chops up as a DM, I think that's one of the first places you can look is, is how can I make myself more flexible, more prepared to, more prepared to allow the players to go anywhere, do anything, say anything. Um, and I think that holds hands really, really contently with improvisation at the table. I right. mean, improvisation is the language of flexibility and right. and uh, adaptation. So, I, like I said, I kind of want to blast through these pretty pretty quick. Okay, well, um, this is going to be an interesting I, yeah, one. I, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that, and uh, and okay. and then kind of hear your your uh, your own kind of shot out there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I. I have mine in order too, but uh, first I'm going to make a comment about uh, what you said, then I'll, I'll blast yep. back. Um, with it is Tuesday. Pretty much the like, ooh. <laughs> um, I wonder how that sounded in <laughs> the mic. But um, <laughs> I, I got to be careful because it's on my list too. Uh, being uh, open minded is what I want to talk about. But from I can see from your DM's perspective how, yeah, and it's something I hear you you uh, mention a lot is. Uh, being able to adapt and being the, the language of improv and is just because I'm out of curiosity. I think you might've mentioned that even how do you work on, is it just like throwing yourself into the wind and being like, okay, let's just see what happens and slowly getting better at time. Is there other things you could be doing to get better at improv? Um, well, as, as the most shameless plug that I can possibly put up is uh, there is a DM in the PM video. See how I set that up. For That's you? I. I mean, I didn't know if that was intentional. <laughs> it wasn't. But but. <laughs> it, 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 but but I appreciate it in, in either regard. Uh, no, I mean, I mean that was the crux of the video, and it's a really short video. So I you mean, check especially it out. by our standards. Yeah. Um. <laughs> but uh, the the video in DM and the PM that I did on not prepping, running yes. no prep sessions. Right. Uh, as far as I'm concerned. These these are skills. These are skills that you have to practice. And yeah. as a DM, you I, I think oftentimes you may not even realize how subconsciously you are favoring the play a, a course of action the players are taking versus yes. another one. Yeah. Uh, simply out of the fact that you've done a lot of prep. If they go that way, you you're ready for all yeah. that. You know. Yeah. Um. And I think that the more that you spend time in that space of not knowing which way is up as a right. DM, one, you come to find that it's a really fun space to be in. Right. Uh, admittedly, especially starting out when you're first experimenting in that space, it's not the most proficient space you're going to be in. You're not going to be delivering the hardest hitting plot hooks and, you know, and, and beats that, that you would, that were thoroughly kind of thought out and prepped. But if you're looking to exercise those skills, yeah, finding dedicated opportunities to do so i'm not suggesting uh that you know the next session i run for the rovers because i want to get better at improv i'm going to just do no prep whatsoever right. um but there's there are many opportunities where you could just go i could call you guys up and go hey guys you guys interested in running a one shot and right. and just so you know like i'm gonna do no prep whatsoever i just want to see where this right. goes and you know it's again everyone's kind of in on the experiment then it's just it's it's and i think even players knowing that lens to well, then we them, to them beginning to kind of be more creative test too. those boundaries yeah, and going absolutely. like oh, what let me see what he does if i do this yeah like, you know i mean it's that's... like when you hear a game you like you can make any choice you can in the world you can do whatever you want then you're going to do everything you possibly can to test that. right right yeah and so i think you know in some regard it's the equivalent of sparring as a dm yeah it really like is that. you know it's it's a uh, scary so, the first time you do it but the more you do it the, the more, more you get in the mindset and, precisely yeah, and and the better you get at quote unquote defending yourself or right. let's say defending the narrative that that is unfolding at the table right. turning it into something meaningful instead right. of something uh totally disjunctured i want to ask one more question i don't want to take up too right. much time no, let's, let's real quick about improvisation i just i was thinking about this do you like would it be helpful if you're like i just can't come up with ideas on the fly where do you get inspiration uh do you go movies books like well, I, I'd say, yeah, I mean, I think basically any anywhere. You yeah. know? I mean, what, whatever, I'd say whatever you're hyped about right now. I right. mean, if you're running D&D, &D, you probably have some innate interest in fantasy or sci-fi or, you know, so you probably have a laundry list of works that other people have done. Right. Um, 
I, I find that a pretty, I, I actually think that's a difficult question to ask because like grow. I mean, that's been my life growing yeah. up. I would just like, you know, I can talk. Everyone who knows me knows I can talk. What? And, and like growing <laughs> up, it was that, it was just right. like talking about just nonsensical, you know, uh, just which is a practice for improv itself like the the, the art of conversation is yeah yeah. Well, yeah i think i think often oftentimes especially if there's a a storytelling element to yeah. it um yeah finding good storytellers it's always fun to listen to really good storytellers yeah yeah story. i think i think that's uh that's a, a skill set in its own yeah, that, yeah. that lends to it but all i right. would love to hear an original thought for all those dms out there coming straight from the player's mouth what makes a great DM. Well, it's not going to be original because I'm just going to basically say what you just said. Oh, well, if I mean, if it's that similar to mine, then I think pivot to your next. Well, so it's not my top of my list, but it's basically the exact same idea. But I want to approach it from my side of the screen. Okay, perfect. So uh, I would call it open mindedness. Okay. Uh, from the player side, uh, we understand that you are creating this world, right? That you are. Uh, you're putting so much time into it, and you're considering things that we'll probably never be aware of. At least, at least if you're not uh, player characters, you should become aware of just of what it takes to become a DM. But what I feel can be a problem for DM players, uh, not DM players, wow, DMs, period, is if they get so wrapped up in the narrative they created that they forget that, hey, we're here too. And yeah, we didn't create this world, but we want to help form it. We want to help create the stories that you also have in mind. Right. And it might be something totally different, and we want to go on that journey with you. But if you don't allow us to go on that journey with you, it's incredibly defeating. It's it's like, why, why am I here? Am I just a person who rolls dice for you and it moves a character a certain way? It's just takes... Uh, a, a dancing monkey, if you will. Yes, a dancing yes. monkey, which... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> No, <laughs> which I know there are tables that are like that, but you never hear those tables being a lot of fun or people enjoy being at those tables. Right. So it's it's that ability to be open open minded to to I think at a base level, just like letting us into this world and and have you use, use the word autonomy, I think, and which is just a perfect word for it. That we have choices and that we should be able to exercise these choices. Right. And maybe it's gameplay for sure. Maybe it's other things like I could be like, hey man. Uh, I want to talk to you about uh, I would like my character to become more associated with drow, but I don't like how the drow is in classic lore. How about if we talk about and, and workshop some great ideas? I am now taking ownership of this world alongside of you. I become right, more invested. Right. And that's something I think we have uh, blurred the the world building lines with regard to the way that we start campaigns. Yes. I know that. that that's, you know, I don't know if that I don't I have no idea if that's in the minority majority where, right. where that lands. Um, but I really like that framing of it. I think a good way of thinking about the world building side is like if you're building out this world, these yeah. events that are occurring, to think about that world that you built. Uh, it's not built out of concrete. It's not built out of stone. It's not set. It's built out of a malleable material. The yeah. whole reason you built it, really, the whole reason you built it. I mean, as much as you might go down that rabbit hole and love that this thing, this edifice that you're uh constructing in right. your own mind and and ready to share with your players is if you didn't build it for them to live in and shape and make new and tear down yep. and rebuild uh then you're not playing tabletop RPGs you're not no uh, yeah. i mean I, as as far as i'm concerned and it really speaks to yeah, maybe I don't know. I don't know enough TTRPGs. There, there might be like a system well, out there. Well, but, no, no. I, mean, I, I guess I, well, I, I guess we are a D and D channel fundamentally. So yeah. let's st let's stick with D and D. Sure, but, but it certainly bleeds out to many other yes, systems. Yes, absolutely. But the idea that you are creating a space that is so rigid that the players do not have an opportunity to yeah. shape it in any way. Right. They are simply victims of what has come before in your own head. Right you're not playing a game. Like right. you should just start writing a book and giving it to your players and going right. like, tell me what you think about this. Right. Um, and, I, and I don't want to be like, you know, Hey, don't, don't make it. So it's like, Hey, you walk into town, you can do anything. I love plot hooks. I love you. Like laying out that stuff I, and giving like, Hey, this is a really cool thing. You should probably do. I have the autonomy to not go that route, but as I am interested in a story and I want to see where things are going to go. And probably if I follow the plot hook, I'll get sweet, sweet loot. Uh, I'll probably take it. That. But like, so uh, that's maybe a whole nother uh, split screen is like the fine art of railroad versus open world. 
you know, because I think you need you need a little bit of guidance. But yeah, certainly, I think I think I think the the idea is that the you would like to craft a space where you have an idea of if given absolute autonomy. Yeah. You have an idea of where the players might take that. And that right. comes down to knowing your players. That comes up. There's so many things that feed into that. Right, right. But the second your players do something that yeah. start taking them in a direction where you go like, holy crap, I did not think this was going to happen. If yeah. your reaction is, how do I get them back on track? Right. That is not flexibility. Your reaction mm. should be, this is cool. I wonder where this goes. Mm. As far as I, I mean, I think that's the, that's the dichotomy of flexible versus inflexible and that is not to say that there aren't times that you shouldn't go how do i get them back on track mm -hmm. but fundamentally the world is open and, and yeah, for yeah. them to explore so love it so uh, so we agree very much on, on that trait. yeah I, I think i think we land pretty firmly on that okay. on that trait well, let me throw Hit out a, me with yeah. the player one okay this is actually the more i think about that it's very borderline on the respectful but i think it takes it a step further okay i think in order for uh, uh what marks like if I sit down with a person, I one thing I really want for them to be is considerate. Okay, that they, uh, elaborate yeah. on considerate for me a little bit because that can mean a lot of things, and I think it means. I think I know where you're going with this, but yes. I, but I think it means something specific at a at a tabletop. What I'm saying, and, and this is it's more out of out of character. I think, I think what we're pretty much talking about is tamed uh, table dynamics, is. The real, and this is one of those things I hammer on a lot. I'm sorry for those of you who listen, and thank you for listening. Uh, is <laughs> you are not the only person at the table, and if you are coming at this from the I'm going to have, I'm all I care about is myself ha uh, playing the game I want to play the way I want to play it, then you're missing out on a ton, and probably no one else at the table is going to like you. So. Using, for example, uh, like I'm a, a min maxer, a loot dragon. I'm mechanically driven, and I'm starting to become more narrative. But you know what I hate? Don't like puzzles. All right? Don't like them. I happen to be married to the person at the table who particularly loves them. So what you're saying is you love puzzles, basically. Right? <laughs> Those of you married, you understand that. No, uh, and yeah, actually, no, I, 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 I am in jest somewhat because I, I think I could enjoy ch uh, puzzles, but uh, Kel wouldn't, so I, I totally check out. Right, right. But if I were to be like, really, another puzzle? Really, that's what we're going to do? And, oh, uh, my wife is trying to figure out a puzzle and a man is helping her now. What am I doing? I'm sitting on my phone, you know. Is, is that being considerate to the other people at the table? Right, right. And is, is it being considerate to the DM who's putting so much time and effort that you're just checking out? No, it's not, No, sir. it is not. Put the phones up, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah, I think phones are. <laughs> unless it's being used in game or something like you're using it to, to take notes or something. But no, even then, do notes on paper be respectful. That's what I. That's, that's what <laughs> no, I feel. If you're but... doing notes at all, you are way ahead of the curve. <laughs> no, I, uh, no, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm right there with yeah. you. Keep going. Uh, and as far as like also uh, taking it, I think we've mentioned this a couple times, is it's okay to shine, and you should shine. You should like know your know where you're going to shine, but don't be afraid. Want to let other characters shine. But also, and this is kind of fun, and it's really fun when it happens, is, you know that place you normally shine? Let, let someone else shine in that spot. Yeah, absolutely. And that is really fun. And it's those create some amazing moments. Right. right. Uh, so it's, it's so many ways to be considerate at the table. Uh, what, do you, what do you think about being considerate? Uh, I, yeah, I, don't, I think I had uh, used a different verbiage for it but i i mean it's it's sounding a lot like we sit at the same table on a regular basis because huh. huh. uh i my <laughs> yeah and i i think this is only a slightly shift in frame uh, a shift in the framing of that that idea yeah um uh i was kind of thinking of it in terms of uh it can be very difficult especially if you are a kind of a boisterous player yes to find opportunities to reserve yourself. Yeah. Um, and those, I think, tend to be the opportunities where when you look at players who really exemplify... Not, I'm not talking about characters right now. I'm talking about players. Yeah. Players who are the support role at the table. Yeah. They, they are just exceptional at finding ways 
right. of receding into the shadows so that player who needs this moment, right. all eyes are on that. And I gotta take that step further. I love the player that draws them into the spotlight. Like, why don't you do this? Beautiful. Yeah. 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 And I think I think that certainly lands in that considerate space. Uh, I think uh it, it's absolutely it's absolutely on my list. Okay. Uh it it's uh I, I think it's one of the more counterintuitive qualities of a great player. Um, mainly because when we think of great players, we go like, you know, oh, that guy that jumped up on the table and, right. and he was reading, not reading, reciting actual Shakespeare, even though there's no Shakespeare in my world. So what's <laughs> what this the dick hell? doing? You're breaking scene, <laughs> damn it. Um, Way to be considerate, dick. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I think, uh, you know, I think when we think about like what makes a great player, what makes a DM, we think about those limelight moments. Yes. Uh, and it should absolutely not be glazed over that uh, sometimes the most powerful thing you can do as a player is get out of the way. Yes. Uh, or, for that matter, hoist yeah. another player into that spotlight. Yes. Um, and I think there are players, I've seen players who, uh, you know, found an opportunity to, again, to just kind of recede, and other times found an opportunity where another player needed like they really needed a moment yeah. to uh, to kind of be theirs to kind of you know break the presupposition they had about their own character. Ooh, I like um, that. You yeah, know, so there's some really interesting things there. Uh, I completely agree. Okay. I, like I said, 100 percent on my list. Um, uh, yeah, I, I I I think it's it's a, an easy one to overlook yes. uh, amongst good players. Um, my my number one, I think, for a great player Ooh. is it's gonna be wrong. Creativity. Oh, that's on my list too. Uh, <laughs> and the the reason I say creativity is because I think, and and this is this is the thing that I love. I mean, you'll see on my list a lot of it, and it's since our lists are overlapping, it yeah, it's the same list. <laughs> the, the the beauty about the creative player uh -huh. and the flexible DM uh -huh. is Ooh. one begets the other. Right one, yeah. Because the yeah. less creative you are as a player, the less flexible your DM has to be. Right. And I can tell you, the as a DM, the best sessions, doesn't yes. mean the easiest sessions, right. doesn't mean... Uh, there's a really fine line, I think, as a DM in terms right. of in terms of the experience can be you can sit down and have a pretty good idea of how the session's gonna look. Yeah. And you end the session and it looked pretty much how you thought. Yep. That's not a bad session. No. A lot of times you go like, pretty much got that one on lock. You know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like right? that's not a bad feeling. But I'll say it does not compare to sitting down at a session and going like, holy shit, I didn't even think about that. Oh my God! They're yeah, gonna do fine. what? There's yeah. gonna, you know what I mean? Like yeah. And just as I was talking about improvisation being the language of of uh, flexibility for the DM, I think that uh, that creativity for the player right um, really is kind of the equivalent player language. Right. And and I think the more creative players are. The like I said, it really you you really if you if you want to challenge your DM, yeah, show up at your next session and be three times more creative than you were at your last session Ooh. because your DM thinks they have you pegged. Right, they think they know how you're going to act at the table. Right. They think you now. I'm not encouraging you to just break. Yeah, I was about to all say character tropes. <laughs> yeah, but but your the character. thing is, is 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 creativity is not bound by any class. It's not bound by no. any. Uh, you know, and and <laughs> even my six intelligent paladin can be creative. From yeah, that. absolutely. Well, here's a, a a great example, and this really this really ties the two together. Okay. And this is is your uh, a bar fight a bar fight is breaking out. Okay, okay, and we're not talking about a bare knuckle brawl. We're talking about someone you know you guys are getting mouthy back and forth. Right. Someone pulls a shiv. They're intending to do serious bodily right, harm. Right. So yep, you yep, arm yep. yourself. You know, it's a full-blown... Right, right, right. A sequence of turns playing out where it's like he attacks you with the shiv, you attack back with your short right, sword. Right, I don't know why you're wielding a short sword, but yep. you're wielding a short sword. Uh, 
Uh, he attacks you with the shiv. You attack with the short sword. He attacks you with the shiv. You attack with the short sword. Someone at some point retreats, dies. The combat ends in some capacity. Right. How much cooler would it have been if that in that opening turn he attacks you with a shiv, you duck it, and you go, I want to grab the chair I was sitting in, and I just want to break it over this guy's head. Right. Now we're we're talking about your dynamic interaction with the right, environment. Right. And and that's I mean, it's not that creative, but but what a difference in terms of the tone yes. of that combat. Now here's the thing. As a DM, if you go, if you go, well, rules is written. Yep. Okay. You can, you know, okay, this is your opportunity to be flexible. Right. Be agile and go, this is so much cooler. Right. Had he done the optimized boring thing, right. What would have the outcome have been? Okay, he would have done die six damage. He would, you know, whatever. Great. I'll at least give him that. Right. You know, let's say, you know, so, so there are so many things about rules as written that tell the players. Don't be creative. Right. Do what you know is going to work every turn. But if as it's, a player, if I'm being rewarded for taking that creative play, then I'm going to explore that more and yes. more. So if I'm like, hey, I'm going to hit him with a thing, and you're like, oh, I'm going to roll a d20 to see if that knocks him unconscious. Ooh. Great. You know? I, I, and I love the idea of going, hey, they were creative. Cool. I'm going to bare minimum give them what they would have gotten. Okay, it's bludgeoning, maybe not, instead of piercing. Cool. Right. Um. So you crack the chair over him. Right. Let's call it die six bludgeoning instead of piercing. But... If you beat his AC by three or more, five or more, I'd have right. to, I mean, you know, the numbers are a little bit arbitrary in this. Right. Maybe I'll apply a status effect. Right. I mean, some cool stuff that can start playing out. And yes. then all of a sudden, another player goes like, oh, he just busts him with that chair. Like, right. I want to do the, like, you know, I want to slam someone on the bar top and rake him down. Right. And, you know, who knows? But but what a frenetic scene that is right. as compared to, so the job of the Agile DM, I know this is harkening back to the earlier one, but right. it really does hold hands, yes. is to see the opportunities where it's not about, it, this is not a narrative scenario. It's a scenario where you are betraying rules as written because it it will be a better session because of it. Right. And, and seeing those opportunities and being light enough on your feet to go, I love what you're thinking here. I want to reward that. Love you know? it. I love it. Um, so creativity and that that was just the combat example there's so many op yeah. opportunities and actually i i don't i'm almost like i don't know if i agree with the creative during combat to s some extent and I, we can go into why when i talk about my dm trait but i want to respond to that very quickly as because i, I want to hit as many of these traits as we can before mm -hmm. we run out of time i'll just say this when i'm playing with sorts of players being creative when i'm playing with other players who are creative what the a magical thing starts to happen is it's monkey see monkey do you just mentioned it so like, hey, you hit him over the head. Maybe I'm gonna go across the tra uh, the 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 chandelier kind of stuff. Right, right. And it could be like you're saying, it couldn't. It's combat is where we went, but it could be anything. Right. Like, in fact, in fact, combat should actually be. I, I don't want to downplay it, but there are there are really probably more opportunities when you consider a whole world of social interactions, exploration. Combat is a narrow sliver, or at yeah. least one third sliver. Um. There's opportunities everywhere to right. be creative, and it'll really keep your DM on their toes and ask them, like, step your game up, bud. Yeah, kind and, of, and, yeah. And I think that can be a very invigorating thing as a DM and as right. a player, that that that's that creates a cycle of, oh, I know my players are going to show up with some crazy shit. i got to be on my right, A game, right. you know? And, like, it really kind of amps everything up. Absolutely, that absolutely. So, so uh, from the player side, a DM thing... Uh, so, uh, this is, I, I don't, I'm almost wondering how much this is going to fly in the face of a lot of the things you're saying, because I don't think it does. I think it's a balancing act, as most things in life. But what I think a great trait for a DM is to be fair. Yeah. But firm. Do you know what I mean? Okay. So. Well, run, run, run with it for me. So I, I want to make sure I'm not making assumptions right. about what you mean. So then this is, I don't want to uh, fly in the face because I totally agree that a DM should be creative and agile. But when we show up to play a game, I, I learn the world through playing. Right. Right. So every time I step into and play, sit at the table and I start playing the game, I'm learning the world. Right. Mm -hmm. It's uh, through experience. Absolutely. If every time I sit at the table and I have to relearn the world and the rules that you have set, it's going to be very frustrating. Okay. I, I Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah. And that's a rather extreme example. Well, not extreme. It's extreme of circumstances. But that idea of, like, if every time I show up, you're like, oh, uh, by the way, we're going to do this now. Like, oh, But I built my whole character around 
the, what we talked about, and now you're changing it. And he didn't even let me know. He didn't even vote on it. You're just doing this. I think, you know, that's not being very fair to the players. Right. And another aspect, I absolutely, uh, we are, you know, we're starting to play OSR. Mm -hmm. And I, w reading through a little bit, uh, one, something that's a little nuanced that I absolutely love. They don't call the uh, Dungeon Master the, the dungeon master. He's the referee. Uh, one of the few failings of early. No, it's, it's great. <laughs> I freaking love it. That's, that's what I feel like. It, that idea of the DM sets up the stage. He sets up the players and then enjoy. But you have to have a set of rules. It's like chess. If you could just, kings could just go anywhere they wanted. You know, what's, what's the point of playing chess? Right, right. Right. So you need your rules in place. And they need to be consistent so that I can... I, I can explore this world to its fullest. Like, so I, given given these two backing up to each other, yeah. directly, I'm really curious. What is your take on the scene that I just painted? I didn't like it. Why? Because from there on in, a player could say, "I'm going to, to use a bludgeoning a item and potentially score a uh, knockout and stun him." Right. Well, hey, you did it back in the bar. Now, if you were to say afterwards, like, okay, just so you know, we were having fun. That's that that was just in that setting. Okay, you know, something like that. But if you just set that stage and then just didn't address it, then why wouldn't? Because that's a huge advantage. I'm doing the same damage, but there's a potential that I could do extra something. I would do that every time. Well, I would say if you're doing it every time, you've ceased to be creative. You're doing that every time. There's well, no incentive for me to reward non-creative play any longer. Well, but you, you would still have to follow that rule that you set. Right? You still have to follow it. And you're just right. Well, it wouldn't be creative. But let's be honest. Like, what is a barbarian going to do other than smash face? Like, that's what he does. No, no doubt. I, I guess, to, to some extent, I think, especially in, in a combat environment, and I, I completely, uh, this is not uh, an argument against what you're saying, because I, I completely get that, especially in combat, yeah, that is probably the most rule-centric portion of the game. I mean, right. when you're in a social interaction, right. it is far less tethered to turn structure and dice rolls and but i think to some extent this also well i don't want to put i don't want to i don't want to jump jump too far ahead in my thought process the the space that exists in a uh here, i i guess here, here's a here's a, a maybe a, a better example and, and that example that i gave shooting from the hip yeah, yeah, no, it's yeah. okay. No, it's on the internet, and it's forever, and you're no, always uh, going to be held the, accountable the thing 12 is, years from is, now. I still, I think I, I might <laughs> well stand, like, like, it just depends. If that's something you guys do regularly, yeah, then I'm not needing to dangle any carrot of like, hey, that was a that was a really cool idea you had okay. there. Um, let's remove all, let's remove everything that's like, hey, there's nothing to grab around here. Sure. You're fighting in a desert, literally. Okay, yeah, sand yeah. dunes, matrix okay. style, white everything. Yeah, yeah. So, given that the sand you're standing is the only thing at your disposal, right? How would you adjudicate if someone said, "I oh, want to pick up a handful of sand and I want to throw it in their face"? What's a what's Ooh. an adjudication? That's a cool creative that thing to do. Cool creative, you don't yeah. want to punish that idea, no, but. Okay, that I don't see a problem with, and it could be used in the future because, especially for one for you one v one, right? Incapacitating that one player is a huge advantage. If you have any more players on the field, then that it's a different, totally tactics. Well, certainly, I, I guess. I mean, I'll, I'll throw out the way I would think about that. Okay. I would love to hear your thought, yeah, okay, thoughts. Okay, cool, on cool. It. If someone said, "Okay, we're in this skirmish," you know, okay. the party's here. There's some adversaries around you, and okay. they and they go like, clearly, I know. Their primary option is I'm going to take my primary weapon and I'm going to attack with it. And, okay. and given whatever abilities I have, but they go, you know what? I want to grab up a handful of sand. I want to throw it okay. in the face. Okay. Sand to the face. I don't really see that being a damaging no, thing. But it might. any human being might, might be able to take, but I would probably have them make some sort of save. Okay. Uh, and, if that save failed, I would probably go, okay, cool. Yes, they are blinded. Save ends. And and even with that, I'd probably maybe even give them a cumulative, an increased bonus on a turn-by-turn -turn basis because it's sand in your eyes, not, not you know, someone didn't 
spray you with acid. It's you know you're gonna blink that out of your eyes eventually. Right, but I would have to say that you would have to be comfortable making that call every time. Every time I wanted to throw sand, if there's sand available, I could do it. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Yeah. But so that's but I thing. would say if you're not in the desert and you're in the forest and you go like, I want to pick up a handful of dirt i don't i don't know yeah 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 i might i may think about that differently i mean that's i, well, I would say that's the I level agree. of specificity with the agility of right. of running so that's those what scenarios. i mean by uh by uh fair like you have made a chain you have said okay i'm going to reward this creative play you therefore need to feel comfortable always having that reward gotcha that's yeah. what i feel yeah well i i, I don't want to interrupt you if you have more to say on it because i definitely have a thought about that okay well i think about fairness in an i think a fundamentally different way awesome so is that your like a response to me because yeah I, so yeah, I don't, I, but only I wanna, one thing i, I will finish. finish off with is being firm i don't think much needs to be said about this because uh you as uh a dm we are all players who have our own agendas and what we want and we will we're quite we can uh we can be quite evil in a way where if we start to learn that if we get something like, hey, hey, damn, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. And do you give in? We will learn. Oh, def definitely. Yeah. So, like, if you say something is a certain way, don't be afraid to stand your ground. Don't be afraid to, like, maybe piss off a player. It's going to be okay if you've got all, all your other ducks in a row. It's going to be fine. Yeah. There, you, it's called boundaries, right? Yeah. You've got to learn your boundaries. Yeah. And I think uh, that echoes a little bit to the player side where, like, it's only fair that if – if as a DM, if a player says, well, what about X, Y, Z? Yeah. Well, for instance, like say in the heat of the moment, I went, well, yeah, they, they busted the chair over. As it happens, they beat the, and like I said, I'd have to think about the numbers, but let's say yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. they beat the AC by eight. That's a big hit. Right. Cool. I'll, 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 they'll have to do a con save or maybe maybe they're, I like I said, unconscious, that's a big that's penalty. That's a big one. But it might be a deal where I go like, okay, they're going to they're gonna take a penalty on their next attack. That would be perfect. You know? yeah, Something yeah, like yeah. that. That's I mean, great. that's that's more in line yes. with my my thinking on it. But um, if in that moment another player went like, whoa, like what? I, I would say as a DM, it's your job to go like, that's what happened. Right. And as, as uh, in terms of like, the table dynamic it's the player's job at that point to go now that's not to say at the end of the session if they really have a problem with that this is going back to respect right cool. yeah yep. but in that moment especially in the moment because because yeah. you know your job uh, alongside everything else right. is to manage the pacing and if you're in the right. middle of a tense combat or a right. you know a very frenetic scene you don't have time to stop and argue the 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 logistics of how you broke the rules because right. frankly that's what you did, yeah. <laughs> you know. I mean, um, no, and I, I totally agree with that. And as a as a P, as a player character, we have to respect that. And like you're saying, like I I sometimes will question you in game, yeah, uh, but I try to only do it once. Like, are you sure that's how it should work? I don't know. And then he's like, "Yep, that's how it's working." Yeah, no, I I, I I think, and I think that I think that that's one hundred percent. I mean, I think it's it's just a deal where, um, like I said, that is not to say there isn't room uh, to if something seems egregious or something seems right. out of step to go like, you know, especially if it's clearly a, uh, a circumventing of the actual rules. Right. Right. You know, um, I like, again, I would argue that it's the double edged sword of agility means you're going to break the rules. Sometimes maybe you're going to break the rules a lot that has to hold hands with, being fair when breaking right, those rules, right, right. not just breaking them for one player, right. not just breaking, oh, you know, that's and there's a huge there, one so, too. And so oh. to, to pivot on what you said a little yes, bit, yes, yes, please, please. when I think about fairness, it sounds like you were making a case effectively for DM when you're, you need to be fair or you need, you are beholden to the fairness of the world. Yes. You have done something here, so you better do it here, mm -hmm. you know? And and I don't think that's wrong. I, I mean, I, again, from a continuity standpoint, I think that's something we should strive to do. It just it doesn't make a lot of sense why sand potentially blinds someone in one instance and potentially right, right. doesn't in another. Now, if you throw sand in an, at a dragon's face, that maybe is different than throwing it at a bandit. You know, right, like, right, right. Um, but in terms of the the crux of that action is, yeah. Um, I, I think I tend to think about fairness more in kind of what I highlighted about, you know, 
anyone who had asked me to bust that chair over someone's head. You know, I wouldn't have granted that to one person in the party and not another. Uh, I okay. wouldn't have granted that. Favorite so tip. when I think about fairness, it's it's more of if there's an action that can be taken in this space, yeah. sure, it can be taken within the confines of the, the limitations or strengths of your character. Yeah, I was about to say, Obviously, the barbarian it, would be easier versus a wizard would have right. a hard time. But yeah. certainly if the wizard was like, you know, I I like I'm I got to do this. like, yeah. <laughs> and, they, and they pick it up and they, they, they roll an 18 on the die. Right. And I go like, yeah, you bust that chair That's right so over. I'm like, awesome you know, it'd be a, it'd be a cool moment. But, um, but it's not for me to just. It's not for me to go like, no, no, no. You're a wizard. You couldn't do that. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, like barbarian. Did you want to pick up the chair? Because uh, you know, like that's that is not. Yeah. You know, that's an an unfair adjudication of. You know, a, again, that you start getting into a space if you're talking about like I want to pick up a boulder that weighs you know, 800 pounds or whatever right, right, right. and throw it down the cliff. Cool. Maybe the barbarian, maybe the barbarian with a lot of help. Yeah. With you know? the raging. And <laughs> yeah. But if it's just the wizard, unless again, they're being creative and they bring some awesome arcane reason Ooh. for why one of their spells is going to help them do this. Yeah. I just got one. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, and that, I mean, when you talk about creativity wizard, Oh my goodness. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, so I'm actually, where are we exactly? We I were, I just gave, Oh God, where are we? You just I said DM, DM fairness, right? So DM, um, I would say on the DM side, I think, um, ultimately if I've got two and I don't know that we're going to have time to hit them all. So, say, yeah, yeah. Say, we're actually, yeah, we've got to watch it a little bit. All right. Well, we'll make these quick. Let me, let me decide where, which, uh, direction I think. The thing that I would say on the DM side is um, I mean, it, it ties so heavily to what we talked about in the kind of the the boilerplate stuff. I mean, communication is so important. Yeah. Um, but I do want to harp on uh, the the difference between just table management level communication. And I, I, I mean, I really think there is a, a echelon of communication you have to be comfortable with right. as a DM. I mean, you are responsible unless literally every sequence that's playing out at your table. And I will, I would love to know how you've managed this. If you have to be agile, uh, you have, you know, pictures and diagrams and i mean if you have if if you're playing through your campaign and there has not been a point at which your dm pulls up the picture to to demonstrate (laughs) maybe you guys aren't being creative enough maybe they're not being flexible enough i don't know yeah but fundamentally your mouth moving and the sounds coming out of it are wholly responsible for implanting everything that exists in the players minds yeah no pressure and and I think that that that's that goes beyond just the act of making sure that outside of session I'm touching base with my players and making sure that they're feeling good about what's going on that they don't have any questions or concerns yeah. about you know you know all of that stuff, but when you're actually at the table running the game, uh, you you are tasked with paint an environment, yeah. paint the enemies in it paint the reason why it's meaningful to be here. Yeah. You know, I mean, all, all of that stuff. And so I think a a trait of a great DM is, uh, and again, the beauty being with all of these traits, I don't think any of these traits are traits that you cannot hone through practice. Right. But is you have to be prepared to communicate like you've never communicated. And your yeah. players, there's going to be times where you're communicating. You still won't get it. And well, well, no, and, and 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 the thing is, that's not necessarily on your players. You know, there's times where yeah. I, I I can say this is a, a really good representation of this, and something that got me thinking about this was uh, the Twitter campaign that I'm running, purely text based oh. campaign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I paint a picture via text, okay, unsuccessfully, yeah, they will begin taking actions. Based on the based on a uh, poor communication on my part, and there have been times I, I'm thankful that it hasn't been too many, but where I have to go like, oh, I'm so sorry, guys. Limitations of text based DMing. Right. This is actually the circumstance that you're seeing. Ah, um, yeah. And 
And at a table, obviously, that can happen like this. Right, right. But when, you know, when it might take minutes or hours or a day to get right. a response back from the party, you know, they're, they're like, like poor communication can really be a taxation on that right, process. Right. And I would, I would argue, even though it's a matter of moments, that really tense battle or that creep into that ancient tomb that's got all of these trappings. It's just, it's built beautifully. If all of a sudden a player goes like, okay, I want to climb the ladder on the back, on the back oh wall. God. And you go like, what, what ladder? And, and you go like, well, you said there was a, a, and you go like, no, no, no. And, and you, you know, what, it, it doesn't matter if yeah. it's the player's misunderstanding or the DM's miscommunication. Players cannot exercise creativity in a space they don't understand. Right. They cannot be motivated to act in meaningful ways in a space they they yeah. they can't visualize. So really, it it's again, it's communication fundamentally, but I think we mean something different between right. communication as a as a yeah. glue that holds your table together. Yeah, hey, what are you showing up for the table? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's it's uh, and and like I said, I actually I'm not gonna say anymore. I think people get yeah. like that 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 it's a big it's a big job. Yeah, that's um, the thing like from a player's side. Uh, yeah, it's so hugely important. I feel like I, it's not on my list. And when you're saying it's like, oh my god, why is it not on my list? But I, it's because like I don't understand how much like that is such high pressure to be under. So I want to be understanding to like that's hard and that's really really hard. Right. Right. But yeah. I I think that is what like like uh, I, you're a great DM. Like you're able to paint a Thank picture. You. Yeah. Hey, you. This is the only compliment you're getting this episode. Well, uh, I mean, maybe course, this whole, the, the whole enterprise, that, you yeah. know, the guy who's way better than you than uh, is Matt Mercer, who's just dominates you and you're a piece of shit. Compared you to you him. know what? I should be more like him. You know, you're, you should grow out your hair. So you're, you do. you're, you're right. I'm, I, I ordered a black vest on Amazon. Hey, well, you're in one step. Uh, anyway, no, I I, that's I, I'm, giving you, I'm giving you a shit, <laughs> but, uh, no, I, I a hundred percent agree. It's like, it's such a hard skill set, and it's one that actually as thanks to technology and shit, it's kind of going away a little bit, but it's, you know, it, it, it does make, a, it elevates your game for sure. Yeah. 100%. I, yeah. I think it takes it to the next echelon. So, all right. We got to run through these. Let's let's bang out one more player and then we'll wrap this up. Okay, because so cause I, I think we've done we've done two and two now, right? Right, right, right. right. So this last one, uh, I think it's it's my God, mine are freaking obvious. You know what makes a great player? What? They're fun. Well, you say it's obvious, but I I I really want you to clarify that for me yeah. because fun can mean almost anything given the context. Yeah. So, yeah. so when I think of like. It incorporates a lot of things we're talking about. When a really creative play comes along, it just like amps up the gameplay where everyone's suddenly engaged. That player who says that thing that everyone's like, oh my God, did you just do that? Did you just say that? Everyone's like, oh my God, which it just livens everything up. It's fun. It's not a selfish fun, right? It's not like, did you see how much damage I did? Because I'm in command of Kel's body and I smite with the crit. Ugh, still pisses me off. But you're gonna, you're gonna be salty about that one for a little for while. A long time. But at some point, you will eclipse that turn with your own. Yeah, like when I'm level 15. But <laughs> that's true. We should we should scale it based on levels because yeah, you may you may never achieve at this those level. Rates. It's not happening. But <laughs> but yeah, it, it's it's like when I'm sitting across other players that are just like, I was like, oh my god, like it just engages it engages the DM. It's uh, yes, but it's not a again, it's not a selfish fun. It's a fun that just brings everyone together. Right. Right. Yeah. I uh I mean I think the reason I asked you to clarify fun is because I was gonna if, my pivot if you didn't hit on it and I think you basically did was I think a a fundamentally <laughs> <laughs> whoa <laughs> like comment and subscribe <laughs> a fundamentally fun character I think is one exercising all of these other aspects we've been talking about. I completely yeah. agree. Yeah. I, I can say as a DM, uh, there are times where a character does something totally within their wheelhouse, totally expected, yep. and it's really fun. Yes. When when uh, Katarina is really mincing words with someone. Oh, yeah. And it's it like, that's really in fun. her wheelhouse. You Absolutely. know she's going to do that kind of stuff. And it's really fun, especially yes. if I'm on the other end of it and I'm having to like right. trade barbs. And we are getting rewards. We're getting it to the next level. We're all succeeding. It's all fun. Yeah. But, and I think I think every character has their version of in their wheelhouse fun. Right. But I yeah. think what takes it to that next level yeah. 
is kind of kind of like you said is and and I think this this especially holds hands with creativity is is when you are when you are creative in a way where everyone at the table you watch like there's these moments where a player does something or or I mean it could I mean it could happen on the DM side but I think I think it's fundamentally a player zone thing you can't use fundamental anymore dude <laughs> for for this topic I'm using I'm getting as many shots in as I can the the laugh track that I'm gonna throw in oh, on dude, this I is think gonna I pretty much blew out the mic to, with that laugh it's going to break the internet no uh um it's it's a deal where that's what I think really will grab a DM or I, I and I don't know I can't speak for all DMs on this side of things by I guess any that's means that's true there's those DMs who are like you you can't have fun in my world this is a gritty realistic world yeah I, and and obviously the tone of the world may right. have some implication, but, but true. those moments that really are fun, yeah. it doesn't necessarily mean they're goofy or silly or, I guess that's true. but it's just yeah, that it's a, a moment point. where someone really exemplifies an aspect that is key to their character or an aspect that is antithetical to their Which character. Is also super fun. But as a DM, it's in those creative moments where I think we really start having fun because again, up to that point, if right. you've done nothing creative for the session, We've planned for that. We, you know, we we can we can plan for the non-creative versions of our players. Right. It's when they start create, getting creative where we have to go. Okay. All right. Now I'm on my toes again. Yep. And that's also where, again, if you've gotten comfortable being on your toes, that's where it really starts getting fun because that's when you start losing sight. That the tail true. of that narrative is just flailing in the wind. Yeah. And now, oh, it's beyond. And now I'm going. Where are we going here, guys? Like, let's, you know, and that's fun. It really yeah. is fun. I mean, discovering yeah. the story alongside your players is so much more fun than walking them through uh, some narrative beats that you kind of anticipated them hitting. Yeah, yeah, no, I love it. Yeah, I love that the the two different types of fun. There's probably lots of other ones, but the antithesis, like, of your character is is just so much. It is a fun. It can, yeah, it can really, it can really uh, be careful things it, in, yeah. in that regard. Uh, my my last character beat, please. Um, I'll be curious to see if this one's on your list. Decisive. No, that's a good one though. The the reason I will say this, and and uh, I will classify this pretty pretty rapidly. Yeah. The, I'll first say the reason I think decisive makes you a great player is because it is the pacing lever that players can reach. Yes. Whereas the okay. DM, I, like, I can do all sorts yes. of things to modulate pacing. Right. But the players, it, like, if the players are being decisive, right. I can go on autopilot. I can go, they are moving through the world. Yeah. I just have to, all I have to do is hold on for the right. ride. And again, as a DM, that's a that's a fun place yeah, to be. God, yeah. Okay, sorry. The language, going. and this is super important uh, for all the players listening. I, I it, Honestly, of everything, I still think my biggest point, my biggest takeaway might be be flexible as a DM. Really be flexible. As a, but on the player side, Think about the language you're using when you are actuating in the world. There is a big difference between can I open that door yes. and I open the door. We st I still do it to this day. I, I, and the, it's, here's the it's thing. Hard. I think it's a manifestation of like players hedging their bets to some extent because let's say you go, can I open the door? You have postulated to the table that right. you're considering opening the door. Well, you've and, given and, opportunity for interjection. You've given opportunity, I, like, because I can read people pretty well. Like, I'll judge your reaction. Like, can I open the door? And you're like, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess. Well, now I know that that that's not the best choice I could do. Oh, I, I love this so and, much. Where you're going with this? And it's also it's a place I think. Like I said, I I can't say if this is a conscious thing. I, I've seen. Many players do it. Yeah. Um, but I think by phrasing, and it could be, it can be phrased as a question, can I? Or right. I think I'll, can, or yeah. you know, the this type of and here's the thing is if you go, I think I'll I think I'll try to pick the lock like that. Like that's you know, and then and then, then, you, yeah. and then I go to ask for you know, okay, go, yeah. I'm you know, I'm gonna need some kind of check. And they go, Well, no, 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 I'm gonna ask, I'm you know, whatever. Cool. That's fine. One, 
pacing has suffered because of that. Yes. Even though it's mid school, it, it compounds. It adds up. Two, if you had said, I picked the lock. Now, you want to change your mind? I go, you're picking the lock. Roll, roll to pick right. the lock. You're right. like you, you are committed by being decisive. And and so, I mean, certainly being decisive in a broader sense of right. like, hey guys, we should go this direction. Right. That's one thing. But I really, I think when you get down to the and this, you know, this is like a very under the microscope thing. Thinking about uh again, assigning your actions in game through uh language like. I do this. Yes. I go here. I, you know, it means that you are going to reap the benefit or right. suffer the consequence of right. that action without the rest of the party having a say. For a, a, a really good example, or a, a, an example that I would throw out, anyways, I don't know if it's a really good one or not, but <laughs> you come to a locked door. Okay. Okay. Uh, and you guys, you go like, well, can I check the door out? Cool. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yes, of course you can. You know that you can do anything in this world yeah. you want to. So you, cool. They start checking checking the door out, and the barbarian goes, "I kick the door in," Ooh. and the rogue is literally sitting there like checking it. Uh, checking it. Cool. But the beauty is, is that barbarian just told the rest of the party, "You guys better get fucking creative," because I kicked this door in. I didn't ask your permission to kick right, the door in. Right. I didn't ask the DM's permission. I kicked the fucking door in. What's on that other side? Maybe you wanted to listen to the door. Right. Maybe you wanted to pick the lock. Maybe you wanted. That's gone now. Right. I did this. Right. And that level of decisiveness. Yes. The DM so many times will ask the party, be creative. Here, I've given you a scenario. Right. Here's two odd rooms. Solve this puzzle. Right. Be as creative as you want and solve it. Figure it out. But when players start doing things that put the onus onto other players to be creative with the with the consequences of those actions. Right. Then the game just explodes. And I think that's a player player interaction. The DM can even kind of cross his arms and go like, "Yep, this is cool." Like this is, you know, like and and I got a lot to say on this. Yeah. So, I'm going <laughs> to hand it I'm going to hand it to you to say uh to to say your piece on oh, it. Oh, and I but forgot the one big piece. Oh. It it really is a, a deal and like I said, so this is why I say to players and this is not, I am not demeaning that right. mode. I've seen so many players do it. It's not an uncommon thing. But think about this when you're in the game world. Is your character someone who sits back and asks permission from the people around you? And right. some characters might be more inclined to be yeah. that way. Yeah, absolutely. But when you consider you are in a horrific environment with things trying to eat you, right. with, you know, how much deliberation do you want to do versus how much do you want to get through that door? And either someone goes, I'm picking the lock. The rogue could actively be picking the lock. And the barbarian right. goes, this is taking too long. I kicked the door in. I mean, right. you know, like we're talking about, it, it's, it's just a, it, it's, it's a, compl it completely changes the player dynamic. Right. Okay. So many things I want to hit on. Yeah. There. Uh, I a hundred percent agree. Like certain things. I a hundred percent agree. Uh, and it, I feel called out because I do the can I question. I, well, I like I said, I don't feel alone in that. Right. I, like I said, I don't know that I've DM. There's anyone that I've DM for that uh, has not been guilty of this, at least on occasion. Well, and, and I feel like that's me learning your world. Like, hey, can I do this? But there's some things I like. I should know better. And I should just. Well, the thing is, is I think at this point you have an. I mean, the, the short answer to that is. Can you? Yeah. Yeah. At this point, and with my character and my understanding of the game, I should be able to just like be able to do it. I love that. Uh, one thing that you're like using your barbarian versus the rogue. Uh, while I do see value in what that could bring to the table, you, I feel like being considerate might be a, at risk. I, 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 I expected this, this portion yeah. of it at least. Yeah. To the same regard of going like, if every time the the you come to a locked door, the barbarian just kicks it in, right? Then the rogue might go like, "Dude, what hey, the hell?" Like, uh, yeah, can I play the game, I'm, please? I'm the guy for this, you yeah. know. But, it might be where like, yeah, or like the barbarian's like, you can like every time he picks a lock and fails, you can see the barbarian getting more and more 
anxious. Yeah. Like, oh, shit, he's about to crack off. If you don't pick up this time, the barbarian's cracking off. Right. Well, yeah. and I would also say, too, that the barbarian kicking the door in might be a great response to the rest of the party going, like, I don't know, should we should we pick this lock? Should we, you know, right. like, let's say the rogue goes, can I pick the lock? Right. And the rest of the party goes, like, are you sure you want to pick? They're like, wait, hold yeah. on. And the barbarian goes, I'm kicking this fucking door in. You yeah. know, like, that's a great, a, a great breaking of indecisiveness. Right. Um, and, yeah, and it, it it's weird now that we're recording everything how much we're in tune with pacing, and that when we weren't recording, we would we could spend sessions talking about the most benign things. Yeah, and, I, and, yeah. I mean, I think I think there's certainly. I mean, there's no doubt there's a difference between the yeah, production side and the. But that just show like I, I pre like sometimes I'm like I wish I could take our time a little bit, but that's the 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 price you pay for being an uh, internet personality. But. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's a generous way of saying it. But We're personalities. Uh, but, uh, like, having a good flow is, like, once you get in that flow, it's a really cool place to explore. Yeah. So I, I, I agree with you. Uh, but, yeah, I, it's the respect thing. And I do want to, like, there's one thing I, as far as being a PC that, like, I also have here that I think really uh, compounds with this is being knowledgeable. Okay. Knowing yeah. your character. Knowing what they do. Knowing what their abilities are. So you're not spending, like, uh, I'm gonna kick the door in. Uh, am I, what's my uh, is this athletic? Is this athletic? So Kelly, check it out. All right, where's my D twenty? Like, no, it should be like I'm gonna kick the door in. Roll the thing. I, I'm a gnome. I'm a gnome warlock. So right. yeah, I, unless your patron really helps you out. A, but uh, like obviously, you can't have everything on your character pre right. like memorized. Like obviously, I'm not someone. Else, that's not what I'm saying. But knowing what you're good at and being able to. Like I think knowledgeable really helps your decisiveness. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, one hundred percent. Yeah, I love how those hold hands. Yeah. Is if you it, much like I was saying, players can't be creative in a space they can't visualize in a space they right. don't understand. Players can't be decisive in a skin they don't they they don't right. they don't know. You know, are they are they wearing size twenty two right uh, iron greaves or are they <laughs> you know or are, are they a in, fighter or a fucking ranger? <laughs> Hey, they've they've, come, they've made they've, they've made better. Yeah, you yeah. you made some enemies right there. I know, right? Thanks to all the optional rules, you you can have a pretty good. That's, that's <laughs> true. Yeah, nothing, nothing, nothing uh, official, but uh, no, I think I think a couple Tasha's, a couple Tasha's, and I think, I think the new stuff they got some interesting things. Anyway, that's not what we're talking about right now. Yeah, but uh, uh, no, I I think that those hold hands really really effectively. All right, I think we need to wrap this up before we turn this into like a yep. uh, over an I, hour thing. So I, I think I, I mean I. I don't even know, honestly, that we need that much of a recap. I, I, Do you have I any, would just like, say takeaways, like after this, like I have a couple of takeaways. Um, well, let me hear them, and I, I'm sure I do. Yeah. Well, maybe it's because it's the last thing that we talked about. It hit the most hope. Is I don't need to ask for permission to do things. Like I'm a character. I, I understand what the world is. I, I understand everything we've been doing. You've done a good job. I don't need to ask to do things. Uh, I think that's going to be like what I'm going to incorporate next session. And I like that that came full circle because I think one of your earliest points with regard to was this is a world that the DM maybe has instantiated for the players to do whatever the hell it yeah, is they're going to the do. Stage, it. you're the referee, not the DM. Fuck you. And so, <laughs> but but with that, it's I think the ownership that comes with with bolstering your decisiveness. Going like I'm gonna open that door because it's what I can. I I don't give a fuck if the DM wants right. me to open that door or not. Which increases like, your creativity play. Which uh, yeah, is, yeah, I I hope. Yeah. And like I said, it it like it really it, it creates kind of it, it reverberates through everything that I we've talked through. I think all the through. choices we've made reverberate. That, yeah, I think. And and the thing is, is I think great play at the table right is a manifestation of all of these skills, holding hands and and both across the the screen and uh, on the player side and and I think. Obviously, everyone that sits down at the table brings a unique set of skills, a unique, uh, you know, yeah. s some people are going to struggle in some of these aspects. Oh, they're yes, going to they're going to I totally struggle. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't think anybody is going to be out there going like I crush every single one of those. Or if yeah. you do, there's something else that we didn't mention. Right. That, you know, or are you being are you being honest with yourself? Yeah, like, let's like, be, <laughs> and yet you haven't found a game in six years. What? Weird. <laughs> um no but i i think that um i think that that really is the yeah. the the crux of it um I, I again i don't know that i i guess i think the uh, on the takeaway side i mean i definitely uh will be um crunching a little bit on 
uh, your perspective on fairness because I think it was fundamentally a different perspective than mine. Oh. But it's it's certainly one uh, as a better. DM. It's better. Where <laughs> it's 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 equal. <laughs> no. It's. Uh, <laughs> But um, no, I mean, I'll, I'll be thinking about that. I, I again, the biggest thing that I would send anyone watching this video uh, away with, yeah. if you are on the DM side, and again, you might be going like, "I'm so damn agile, it scares me." Yeah, that's phenomenal. Yeah, can you be more agile? That's 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 my question. Is uh, I mean, is because the 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 more fluid you are going to function as a DM, just it further dismantles okay. any barriers to player agency. Right. Um, and on the player side, I mean, there's, there's a lot um, in, in terms of, you know, like I said, I think so many of those hold hands so yeah. well that it begins, yeah. it begins to be hard to tease those apart. Um, but I think but that do tease me. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. <laughs> so uh, I, let's uh, I, I guess I, I would just say, you know, as a player, um, I think everything that we talked about through action yeah. uh, is a call to your DM to elevate their game. So if you start showing, you don't have to show yeah. up at the table and go like, hey, can you bring a little more energy? Can you right. be, if you show up and you are going, this session, I'm going to be more creative than I was last session. This session, I'm going to be more decisive than I right. was last session. This session, I mean, you know, if you just go down that list. Right. Your DM is going to go, whoa, who in the hell are these guys? Like, right. you are going to light his side of the game up or right. hers. Which hopefully and it's it's a good thing. I can see some DMs getting well overwhelmed. But I got to throw that back in your face because it's also up to the DM to set the, the – you are setting the tone. So oh. if you want us to be creative, you need to be creative too. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. It's not all. It's not all us, man. <laughs> no, no. I, I and that's the thing. Don't is, just turn I, at me. The, the beauty is, and I and I think you hit on this is that, you know, we are playing a game of ping pong effectively. And if I, if we're just a game of emperor, <laughs> beyond to like. Oh, I love that if, movie. <laughs> if we are, if we are, just gently volleying back and forth. Right. Great. But if you want to see what the person on the other side of the net, on the other side of the screen, is capable of, put a little heat on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. And idea. see what comes back. Yeah. Because you, I mean, I think you'll see that that rising tide will flow both right. sides of the table. Um, and and I think hopefully anyone listening is walking away at least one of these going like I I see some room for improvement, right. and you're gonna see Maybe that manifest. Get like a, a tiny bit of salt that you can put in your stew. You don't have to take the, like, yeah, I'm sure you guys have plenty of this stuff yeah. going on because you're all amazing and we love you. Precisely. Precisely. There is one person that uh -oh. is particularly amazing oh, on this day sure. that I definitely want to uh, give a brief uh, shout out to. That's going to be uh, down in the comments if you have not seen them. Say what's up to Aurora101, woo, woo, woo. Uh, our latest patron. Uh, we just wanted to say thank you so much, Aurora. Yeah. Um, I, I will say... I. One of our earliest say, subscribers from the beginning, uh, and one of our earliest commenters, yep. and uh, crossing multiple streams of what we do here. Uh, um, some some solid comments both on the Rakish Rover side as well as on the split screen yep. side. Um, we just want you to know how much that support means. Um, it's it's huge. Uh, I love seeing the uh, comments down in the comment section. And uh, just knowing you're out there enjoying the content means the world to us. All the support is hugely, hugely appreciated. So Aurora 101, as is tradition, cheers, my friend. And uh, I, we're just going to have to hear in the comments, like, what what's in your cup? Yeah, right. It's, it's a new thing now. So scotch whiskey for... Uh, we found out from old Scott Burns yeah. that uh, scotch whiskey is uh, the drink of choice. Uh, Aurora 101. Uh, what are you raising in your glass? Uh, if you're not 21, you don't. <laughs> if, you're, if you're not 21, just don't incriminate yourself. Yeah. You know, like lie to us and tell us it's something right. else. Or wherever your legal age, drinking age is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. That's true. Good yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Um, but beyond that, you got anything else for the people? No, I think we need yeah. to sign off on this one. Hey, thank you let's, guys. Let's do it together. We haven't done one of those in a while. So thank you guys so much for joining this time. Until next time. The, the world, world is, is yours. yours.